So the approach we're going to take is actually one, believe it or not, that's influenced by psychology. Um, uh, and here are quotes from a couple of psychologists, just so you know that I'm not crazy. Um, the ability to think is perhaps the most distinctive of human capacities. Typically, thinking involves mentally representing some aspect of the world, including perhaps some aspects of ourselves, and then manipulating those representations or beliefs so as to yield new beliefs where the latter may aid in accomplishing a goal. All right, so if we're like trying to plan our errands for the day, we might want to represent what we have to do and where we might go, and we manipulate those to say, okay, well, if I go here, where will I be now, and what can I accomplish? Now that I've done that, where might I want to go next? Where in the end, we're trying to accomplish our goal. So that's, that's, that's the point of view we're going to be taking. And we're going to be, um, over the next couple months, we're going to be trying to be more and more general about the way we solve the problem. Um, I, as far as I know, cognitive psychology has not been solved yet. We don't actually know the exact way in which the mind works in all its full glory and details. Um, but in general, uh, I think there is some agreement that people have some kind of general ability to solve problems and to plan ahead. Um, so that's expressed in this quotation here. The ability to solve problems is one of the most important manifestations of human thinking. We might therefore suspect that problem solving depends on some general cognitive ability, like not some little special, like you've got planning cells that grow in some part of the brain. It's like, no, you have this general ability to plan that can potentially be applied to an essentially unlimited range of domains. Okay, so we're going to be talking this first chunk of the class about problem solving in as general a way as we can, and then we're going to take it even more general later in the, uh, later in the semester. So we're going to talk about a very general method of problem solving. And uh, let's see. Uh, the kind of the kind of the the, the uh, framework we're going to take is something called state space search. So let's see if I can line the piece of paper up. There we go. Okay. So what we're going to do is. Uh, We're going to solve problems like take assignment one, for example. The, your agent, your AI system, is in a certain state of the world, and we want to accomplish a certain goal. Right? And there are certain actions that we can take as an agent. And we're trying to figure out, okay, what, a, what actions should we take to accomplish our goal? And we're going to take a very straightforward approach to this. So here's some starting state of the world. Right? If I'm a little vacuum agent, maybe here's where my little robot is. Over there, there are two rooms in this world, and right now I'm in that room over there. Um, maybe there's some dirt over here in that, in that room. Everybody see that okay? Okay. So um, that's the state of the world, and that captures everything that I need to model about what's going on is that that's where I am and that's where the dirt is. And then I imagine, what can I do? Well, maybe I can go right. right? And so this is, this is the world that I get to by going right. right? So here's a state, here's an action, and now the robot is in here and there's also some dirt there. So that's a second state of the world. Right? These are states. This is an action. We're building a graph, the state space graph. What can I do from here? Well, maybe I can go right again, but that'll just take me to the same state because I'll just bump into the wall. Um, but I bet I could also go left, right? And that'll take me right back to the world I was in. That's not very interesting. So maybe, maybe there's something, some more interesting things I can do. Maybe I can vacuum. I bet you can all guess what the world's going to look like after I do that. 
Right, there we are, no dirt. So if this is the initial state of the world, if I'm going to try and plan or, um, or imagine what I should do, one of the things I can do is expand the state space graph. I'll imagine doing all the different kinds of actions. Maybe I'll imagine going left. Maybe I'll imagine vacuuming. I bet that also goes just right back in. So there's no dirt there. So here I have left, right, vacuum. Here I have left, right, vacuum. Um, when I'm vacuuming, I can certainly, I could certainly uh, try to vacuum again. I could try to go right. Uh, I could go left. I could certainly do that. So this is here. Where, this is also called unfolding the state space. Um, it's looking at all the things you can do and all the states that that they can take you to. So, um, so the, this this first uh, week of the class, we're going to talk about uh, how to do planning in a state space like this. So, so everyone understands what I mean by state. So we, we, now we've got a, a graph here. Um, so that's the initial state. Now, uh, this is a goal, right? This is, this is, this is a state that, that qualifies as a goal. Um, this is also a state that qualifies as a goal. If I want to find the shortest plan that achieves a goal, what would I do? Yeah, trying to get over here. So, uh, what do you uh, do? You have any ideas about what sort of algorithm I might use? Uh, an algorithm that would iter iteratively find different paths and pair them up to find the shortest path. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly. So this is a graph search problem. Um, so if you ever took an algorithms class where they talked about graph traversal or something like that, that would totally apply right here. Uh, has anyone done that? Oh, A star. I don't think we know about A star yet. We'll talk about that on Monday if we're lucky. Um, but uh, what's what you say before that? Depth first search. That's the kind of search people have often heard of. Yeah, so, so, um, so this is a picture of the state space. Now, if I'm an algorithm and I'm exploring this state space, what I get is a tree. So it's a tree. I'm going to just draw it even in a different color. Um, here, here I am in the initial state. Does that show up? Yeah, that shows up. Here I am in the initial state. I imagine all the things I can do. Um, well, I can go left. Right, that will generate that state. I can vacuum. And that leads to a world that looks like that. And I can go right, which leads to a world like this. Okay, right, those are the three things we can do. We're, we're unfolding the state space. Um, here's, a, here's a search tree. This is, this is the, the tree that our search is going to be looking through to find a good plan. So if I do depth first search, what am I going to do next? Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Sorry? What end? Yeah, that's a problem. That's a problem. So we're going to have to be a little clever. If you just like take your favorite depth first search and say, oh, we're going to use that for planning, it's not going to work. We're going to have to think a little bit hard because, you know, if we're allowed to generate ourselves as a child, then this tree is going to be infinitely deep, and that's not good. Fantastic. Perfect. So that's called duplicate detection. So we're going to keep something called a closed list of all the nodes that we've explored. So um, 
some technical terms here. Um, this is a state, but when we are, when, and, and this is the state space, it's kind of like an abstract mathematical object that exists. When we talk about how an algorithm is exploring it, these are called nodes because there's actually other stuff we keep track of as well as the state in a node. I like to draw nodes with circles. Um, they have a cost associated with them, which in our case, let's say every action costs one. So the G value here is going to be one. Right? The G value for all these is going to be one. And these two nodes down at the bottom, they are duplicates of this initial node here. They have the same state. They're different nodes, because these guys have a G value of 1, and that guy has a G value of 0. So they're different nodes, but they, have the, they represent the same state. We want to detect those. Once we, once we try and generate them, we want to say, oh, no, no, don't do that. We've already been there. We already have a zero cost plan that gets us there. So don't you dare start talking to me about a, a plan of cost 1 that gets me there, because I already have a plan of cost 0 that gets me there. 